Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 18 of Think Twice, a weekly show where we talk about things going on in the world of Magic the Gathering, gaming, and pop culture. As always, I'm Justin Parnell, joined by my co-host Ali Antrazi, and this week we're going to be talking about our future team event in SCG Baltimore, what silver border cards do for cubes and commander, and of course, Thor Ragnarok. Let me guess, Ali. Another weekend. Another, another hex event. Another yes, hex you event. are right. So we had a 5K hex event this weekend. I, of course, did very well. Wow. See, so top eight again. Um, pretty close. Okay. Well, essentially, that's not, that's not top eighting though. I got uh, the dreaded and lovely ninth place. I'm all too familiar with that. So we all know everything is right in the world. So I got ninth on breakers. There were, I think, three, three or four people made top eight. Um, with my same record, I got ninth, and there was a bet going on by the a Corey Corey Jones. He's the one that started 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 Hex. He said the creator creator of Hex. So he's the Richard Garfield of Hex, basically. You know who's really the Richard Garfield of Hex? Me, Richard Garfield. Cool. All right. So so, the, so then he uh, he says if you play this, this creature type called Pippet in your main deck. And your top eight will make a vanity card, a vanity card of you. It's basically a card in your image. So I took on this challenge. I played a bit in my deck, got ninth place, didn't make eighth. I tweeted, and I was like, yo, got ninth place on breakers. Nobody in top eight is playing this card. Nobody in top, nobody in top 16 is playing this card. I don't think you can play these cards like me. And I almost made it. I missed it on breakers. He's like, all right, close enough. So you're going to get a vanity card? What is, what is a vanity card? It's just a card that looks like you. It's just just a random card, like nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm part of a, a group called the Mary. This, I mean, gonna be a group called the Mary Caravan. Merry Merry Christmas fan. No, Mary. <laughs> Mary. Oh, okay, so it's a bunch of people named Mary. Caravan. It's a caravan of people named Mary. Caravan. Yes, yeah, a caravan. Mary Caravan. Of Marys. Harry Carey. Harry Carey. I hate you. Anyway. What'd you do? <laughs> you don't want to talk about your ninth place? I mean, that, that's also happened. Like, a ninth place. I got the dreaded, you know, sorry, not, not the dreaded, the lovely 25 packs, you know, half a booster box or the, a booster box. Thanks thanks for coming. Thanks for playing. Thanks for coming. We're going to let the real, the, uh, the real players play. Yeah, basically like, out. basically, here you go. Here's some packs. Have fun. Go draft or something. No one drafts those packs. Except for, actually, on Hex, you, yeah, on Hex you do draft those packs. So that, that is kind of nice. Usually if you get like second at a P2Q or RP2Q or whatever, you get like this box, two boxes. You never draft that. But on Digital Client, you can actually draft those packs. So it's actually not the worst. Oh, that's not so bad. It's still pretty bad, but yeah. So for me, I went to Grand Prix Atlanta. Which no way. Which was the last Star City Games hosted Grand Prix for the foreseeable future. Which is a little bittersweet. Um, they're, I'm going to be honest, they're a son of a bitch to run. They're really long. The hours are super duper long for myself and my staff. Uh, but I get a lot of, meet a lot of fans for... Commander versus mainly. I did have a couple people tell me that they listened to Think Twice, which was super awesome. So for those of you that are listening that told me that you listened to the podcast, you were the people that made my weekend. I think I told all of you that. And it's true. Because being able to have more people listen to this podcast and hear feedback on it in person is like the best thing ever. So thank you to those of you that that talked to me about Think Twice. That's super awesome. Uh, but I met a lot of people. I signed a lot of cards and play mats specifically a lot of mill cards did you sign any uh any, any babies i did not still only one on the babies i've only yeah. i've signed a baby you signed a baby i've signed a baby <laughs> his baby you signed. it's just this guy at gp at gp vegas he he brought up and he was like can you sign my baby's arm i was like um and he had his wife with him and his wife just kind of like holds her hands i'm like i don't know and i'm like i don't know and he's like i have a i have a i have a removable marker. It was like a vis-a-vis. -a -vis. So the one that just comes off with water. 
I was I was just joking. Oh no, I definitely I know. Was, and, and you're telling me you're just telling I was me your true the story. Baby. Yeah. So I was just like, all right. So I just signed the baby. It was like it wasn't asleep, but it was like kind of docile. So I just signed its arm. And I was like, there you go. He's like, I'm gonna wash it off. I just wanted the picture. Oh, I was like, all right, man. You got it. I've now signed your baby. So I've never signed a baby. I have officially signed a baby. You're basically the president. Well, I didn't kiss I didn't kiss the baby. Same thing. The, signing the baby is the same as kissing the baby. If you're Trump. I don't let's not. We're gonna move in a different direction from here. <laughs> um so yeah, did GP Lane. I got to play a little bit of Commander. I uh played I gotta play one essentially for about an hour each day with my Yeheni deck, which is my favorite commander deck. And uh it was good. I like playing that deck. It's funny because people, you know, we all well, commander versus we play all sorts of different decks and we play a different deck every week. We actually just recorded this past week we recorded our hundredth episode ever, which is a good milestone for us. Uh, but we play a different deck every single week. So sometimes it's difficult for us to be familiar with all of the interactions with every single deck and know the decks in and out. And so a lot of times we're playing with cards that we're really just, we don't play with very frequently. So whenever I play with people in person, they're always surprised that my deck, like it seems like, like I, I usually win when I'm playing with other people. <laughs> One, because I think there's, they don't want to attack me because they want to keep me in the game. Okay. For whatever reason. Well, yeah, you're famous. Yeah. Um, cause I'm always like, there's, there's been moments where I've been playing with like fans and they're like, I'm clearly the person I need to focus on. They're like, I'll attack Joe. I'm like, all right, man, well, this is, I'm still going to crush all of you. <laughs> um, but people are always surprised cause my deck, my like, personal decks are a little more powerful than the decks that we play on the show, which is, which is, you know, it's, it's what I like to do. I'll put a grave pact in play, make you sack by a bunch of creatures, make you lose a bunch of life with grave merchant. It's just, you know, black man of magic. That's what I want to be doing. This is it the everyday life of Justin Parnell? It's I wish it was. I wish I could just just put Grey Pact into play every day. That would be great. Would you That's be my dream. if you could live do you think in your for other life or in your future life? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna be a grey merchant? No. No, I don't think so. I would think I would be Erebos. No, I, no, not Erebos. I think it'd be something something uh different. I think it'd be Pack Rat. Why would I be pack rat? Like replicate myself? No, because because you're a rat. Why am I a rat? Because you just are. Are you saying I look ratish? I have a you ratty, weaselly like face. The rats of rats. Well, you're not, you're not a god, so you're definitely a rat. I mean, pack rat's powerful. <laughs> it's very very powerful. It is it is a powerful card. We did run a poll uh, about a month ago. When we were having a discussion, and one of the options... Oh, it was between um, which is the true god, er Erebos or Crufix. It was Packrat. And the winner of the poll was Packrat, as it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, man. Speaking of... Before we get into our first topic, speaking of polls, uh, we've now done... Uh, we You know, we started our new Question of the Week segment. And uh, two weeks ago, we had about... I won that one last week. Our question of the week was, was energy a mistake? And you won that one pretty soundly with you saying, yes, energy was a mistake. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty obvious. I feel like people voted without listening to my reasoning. I disagree with that. You think people listened? People listened and then absolutely listened first, the whole way through. Yeah, I'm sure. And then voted. Yep. That sounds like magic players. Absolutely. Yeah. They're very responsible. Yep. Always take their time to th think through everything. Very vigilant. Th think of all the possibilities. Very monastery. They like the... What? Monastery? Monastery mentor? Gotcha. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Um, so we're going to have another question of the week, this guy, a little bit later in the show. Uh, but we are... Uh, Ollie, you and I are going to be heading to SUG Baltimore this weekend. Yeah. The best, a, the best city in the United States of America. I will have to disagree. However, uh, this is a team event, and we have a lot to say about it. So we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Bake. Yep, I said, I said bake. Yeah. 
so Ollie, we are, as we said, we're headed to Baltimore for the SCG Tour Team Open. TM. TM. I think is what I'm supposed to say. TM. So we're essentially the new Goblin card. That's Triple Strike. The three-headed giant. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit with Silverboard stuff, but yes. Yeah. So the important question is... So the, you think they'll change the name from Team Vent? You, you know how two, two player teams is a two-headed two giant? giant. It should be a triple three, three headed, headed goblin. goblin. Yeah, I hope so. That'd be great. Three headed, three headed goblin. It, sh- it really just should be. <laughs> so it's it's uh, Ali. You're playing modern. Yes. Which makes you the captain. I'm always the captain. Well, you're the captain this time. I was the captain of United United States of America. So the captain. I was team captain in 2011. 12. 12? 2012. I was the team captain. Yeah. And here we are. Back again, same thing. Yep, same captain of a bunch of washed up magic players. And they're asking, Ollie, what are you playing in modern? That's I don't a know good question. <laughs> Ollie, what are you playing in modern? <laughs> so, so Ollie's playing modern. Uh, I am playing legacy. Again, the only format uh, that's not vintage that I'm not a liability in. And Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sanctioned format. <laughs> sanction format. Okay. Unlimited counts. I'm not a liability unlimited. You're not. You're not. Not a liability unlimited. You're never, li- you're never liability. Uh, I would... Well, we'll, we'll see at the Invitational when I'm playing Standard and Modern. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but we also have picked up... Uh, we we normally... Uh, last time we played with Joe Herrera. Mm-hmm. And Joe played Modern. You played Standard. I played Legacy. Yeah. But Joe is now living in Orlando. So Baltimore's... It's a little bit of a... A little bit of a walk for him. Well, he was going to go, but he bailed. So we have picked up uh, Pro Tour Top 8 competitor Stephen Mann in his place. Decent, decent replacement. Yeah, I felt like uh, the stats are good on, on that one. Is, is, is this a step up or step down? <laughs> From who? From, From us? From Joe. <laughs> From Joe? Yeah. I told Joe, well, I told Joe, I saw Joe at... Uh, at Grand Prix Atlanta, yeah, this past weekend, I was like, "Well, I was like, Joe, well, we, I was like, you know, we picked up a better player. We're just gonna have less fun. So, Dang. which is more important? Dang, burn. What's more important though? What? So the thing is, because so this is something that I wanted to talk about. Um, I've I've never had a meaningful interaction with our our teammate Stephen Mann. Yeah, so. This is going to be interesting for me because, like, when I don't know, it, I I've never teamed with someone that I'm not friends with, so I don't know how that's going to affect when we're talking about magic, right? In a sense that affects each other. Well, it's time for a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. I was gonna let you just keep going. I was gonna. I was waiting to pick up. That wasn't the you. There was a whole other line for you. Get the I, part. I forgot the other part. Oh, you don't know a whole new world. I should. Well, because well, that, 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 that is racist. The, that is the, racist. That is not. It's the best it's Disney. Of, it's, it's Aladdin. <laughs> Aladdin, is, Aladdin is my favorite Disney movie. That's my favorite Disney song. So is that why? Is that why I'm your best friend? Because Aladdin's your favorite Disney movie. <laughs> Don't you put that on me. No, <laughs> that is why. It's not. <laughs> but I wow. am disappointed you can't sing the Aladdin part in a whole new world. This I does take a, believe this, it's a new spin on our this friendship. Makes, this makes so much sense <laughs> now. <laughs> You're putting all the pieces together. Yes. Oh, my God. I was God. really disappointed when I found out you didn't grow up as a thief stealing so, bread. <laughs> so was my dog. <laughs> With a monkey. So was, so was yeah, a, Baxter. Was Wiener Dog. I had a Wiener Dog. He's, he's, Baxter's a little monkeyish. Was he a boo? He was. You know what? Next dog I'm going to get, I'm going to name him Boo. Yeah, play into the stereotype, Ollie. I mean, might as well. Anyway, with... uh, So, I don't know how to... <laughs> I don't know how to interact in a magic sense with a, a person that I'm, I'm invested in how they're doing and they're invested in how I'm doing. Like, what? How, what's going to happen when we... When, just, when someone loses? <laughs> no, not when someone loses. We're not going to lose. Okay. I expect us to we'll go 3 All 3 every, every time. We are, We're going to win all of our matches the exact same time. Okay, okay. Um, And, but but seriously, when we, like, disagree on a play. 
like when he's watching my match and he's like, I think you should do this. And I'm like, I want to do the opposite thing. You probably, probably, probably should do what he, what he wants to do. I'm not going to do what he wants to do. I'm the legacy expert in this situation. In air quotes, by the way, guys. Air quotes. Legacy. I, those are not my air quotes. Those are all his air legacy quotes. Legacy air quotes. Legacy expert. Legacy air quotes. <laughs> they wouldn't be like that should be the, that, should, that should be the my team name. Legacy, legacy air, air quotes. quotes. <laughs> um, but but seriously, like, how does like how is that how is that going to affect our the team dynamic? Am I going to care as much? Because I care about you. I care about you whether you're winning or losing, whether we're playing in a team tournament or not. Yeah. As much as I care about myself, sometimes more. And I know you feel the same way. So yeah. But like, I've never played in a team event with someone that I'm not like. Oh, this is this is one of my friends. That's okay. I got your back. We'll 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 get through it. But real quick, deep deep tangent. I just thought of a name for our team. We're gonna be two bros and a pro. Two bros and a pro. <laughs> yeah. You like that? I wish that you could still put team names on your team. But I get why you can't. Yeah, but I like that. Two bros, one pro. Two bros, one pro. I like that better. Two bros, one pro. Yeah. Or we're the we're the bros. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely the bros. <laughs> we are hit down the bros. There's I mean there's there's there could have been some argument made whether you were the pro. I'm always in the bro camp though. It's okay. I, 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 I still, permanent bro camp. I still I still love you, Bruno. Oh, thanks, buddy. I think it'll, be, it'll go okay. Well, I mean, we're going to have fun. Obviously, we, we want to win too. We definitely no, want to we win. Do, yeah, I mean, and we're, we're, I mean, we're joking here, but we do want to win. Um, and I do, and I honestly think that uh, that we're prepared. I think I'm prepared. I think you're prepared. And I think Steven Mann's better than both of us. So by default, <laughs> he's more prepared. Um, right, we we'll got that. So, but but when when we're like. When we're thinking about deck, about preparation, um, like how much does it matter who is sitting where if all things are equal? Uh, like you know, we say that the the middle player is generally the captain. That's the person playing modern in this event. That's mm -hmm. you. You're gonna be playing modern, right? So I need to play. Technically, it's not, it's not the captain. I need to play a deck that. So see, I think seating 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 obviously matters. It does. It so does. as it's, a it's certainly not irrelevant. Right. So as a captain, I'd probably want to play something that doesn't require too much thought. That's kind of quick, so I can interact with both of you, mulligans, and help you out if you need help. So obviously, I think the the best deck for me to play is, is gonna be like a lantern control, lantern control with word invention. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna let you play that though. That'll give that'll give us. You, you, we talked about this at dinner. We're not gonna. We're so okay. So last time, um, going into our last team event, I was gonna play Grixis Delver, but I sent Joe and Ollie a list. I was like, and it was ultimately the Sultai Death Shadow deck that I played for several months, and actually did really well with at several tournaments. Um, but I was like, I, I sent this deck, and I was like, I kind of want to play this deck, just like to float it out there. I wanted to see what they thought, yeah. and they were just like, Oh, you know what you're doing. You can just do whatever you want. So I was like, ah, I'll probably play this Grixis Delver deck. And then as like I get closer to tournament, I'm like, man, I really think this deck is good. And the night before I had my deck laid out, and I was just like, I'm just gonna switch these few cards around. Yep. However, hey. you are switching out like 58 cards and you're leaving in like two islands. I don't think they plays islands. So you're switching out 60 cards in the main deck. <laughs> uh, probably. Have you seen the decks look sweet though? I think I think. I think where where I mentioned seems really good in uh in lantern control. I guess I don't does it? Sure, whatever. I don't spend any time thinking about lantern control. It's a waste of my thought process. Well, it's a fast deck that can play that can you How know. is it fast? You literally the point of the deck is to do nothing. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna do nothing, then help you guys out, and then go time. And we win. Profit. So you're banking on both of us winning. No. For, first of all, let's move away from this because you're not going to play this damn were Lantern of Were Invention deck, okay? Uh, what are you going to play? Um, probably, probably, probably the Jessica, Jessica control. Good. Good old classic. How's that he different than Lantern control? 
I guess I guess you, I guess it's, it's more proactive a little bit. Actually, yeah, a lot, you, have, a lot. you have creatures that can attack your opponent. <laughs> that is true. That I, I think that alone makes it more proactive. I am going to play Search for Osconta, which I am in full agreement with. And Torrential Gear Hulk again on board with that. Those are powerful cards. Like just because they're in standard uh, doesn't mean that those aren't modern or better power level cards. You know what? I'm also going to play Glimmer of Genius. Sure, that's a power. Wow, card you're on board with that too. Yeah, okay. that's fine. All right. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's the worst of the three. I think you can agree with that. Yeah, but no, it's it's, it's not powerful. I mean, it's not you're you're not playing four of them. Chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> you're not playing four. No, I'm not playing four. Okay, good. I can't play four. That card. That card competes. That card competes. Cryptic command. And uh, you're playing four of those. Playing, yeah, playing four of those. See, this is why I feel comfortable going to this event because I it's, feel it's, comfortable with you playing a four of Cryptic Command deck. Because I'm playing one, 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 two, one, 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 one four. Cryptic four, command. exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That is exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing four Cryptic Commands and then you whatever else play like twenty five lands and then you figure the rest out. Yeah, essentially. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. All right. That also that sounds fine. That sounds totally fine. Because I know when I look at your board states, I'm going to disagree with virtually everything. <laughs> but somehow you will find a way to maneuver yourself into a corner and then throw your opponent into a well, which you didn't even know was there. <laughs> oh man, that's all on Trazi magic. Um, <laughs> throw him into, is this because I'm brown again? Why is it? Why is it gonna be a well? That that is not even a a trope or I see, anything. I see you. What wells? I got, that doesn't I got, make I got anything. My, I got that my literally own doesn't even make any sense. Anyway, so seating. Yes. Is it important? Yes. Yes. But traditionally, like you said, people do put their fastest player or the player playing the fastest deck in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, that's more common when you're playing the same format. Right? You're all playing standard. You're all playing modern. You put your, uh, your, your aggro deck in the middle. Yeah. Or do you try to metagame against people putting their aggro deck in the middle? Right. In this format, we're playing three different. Th- or in this term, we're playing three different formats, so you don't have a lot of that. No. But I still think that maybe you're going to see more humans, more merfolk, more fast decks because people are maybe putting more emphasis than they need to on fast deck needs to go in the middle, even though you're doing a cross format tournament. Do you feel like that's going to be the case? Um, I think for for a very few number. But I think modern is so weird, man. People are just gonna play what they want to play. I think in this universe it's gonna be the same thing. Like I think if we were, I think even more so personally. They just you go as friends. I think they just play what they want to play. I think I think there'll be like a a solid like maybe ten percent that will actually take this to heart. Like okay, let's figure out seating. Let's figure out what we need to do. But the problem is that's kind of that kind of backfires when half the field. At least half or half or more just don't don't really care. They're there to play modern. That's yeah, probably the, probably more than half. Yeah, and well, I would guess. Yeah, and that, that is the modern format. Like modern format is like play which one play, uh, play a two 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 deck you can win. Play even two three deck you can win. Modern is modern, man. Yeah, I mean we were saying we were saying before the podcast that there's probably like fifteen decks you can win a tournament with in modern. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is by far by far the most of any format. Yeah, modern like is. Magic. Yeah, modern is healthy, but. It's it's crazy. Um, so, do you believe that there is a best deck makeup for the team as a whole? Like, is there a combination of decks that gives you the best chance to always win two out of three? Yeah, triple triple R. I call this the what's triple R. Let me let me tell you. Okay, please en- enlighten me. All right. I think you'll get John after I finish the standard, per, standard player. Standard player, bomb not bread. Modern, burn. Legacy player, burn. So you think that's the best makeup? Well, typically, how much burns would, would match? You, you, if you say if you, if you say burn wins half its matches, right? Fifty percent. Yeah. Or maybe a little higher, sixty percent. 
But in standard, in standard, in standard it's, it's, it, it has to be higher. Must must be higher. In standard. Yeah, it has to be higher because that's a tier. That's a notable tier one deck. Yeah, in modern, it's um, it's still it's still higher than fifty percent. It's it's lower than standard, but, but legacy still, is the lowest. Right, but still, like you can still get people. But legacy still has like price of progress, which people don't play around still for, for some weird, for whatever reason. So I play around it. I just don't have basics in my deck. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> there you go. So you get popped. And this is no. I'll take I'll take one off my fetch land instead of two off of just letting it sit there. <laughs> but seriously, I, I do think that uh, something like that is just it's just it's quick. You, you, help, you, you actually can, you can actually help each other out, and doesn't require much thinking. You guys get breaks, and the deck is just it's just gonna get, give you free wins. Like it, it it lets you punish your opponents for misstepping, like not mental misstep, but like actually like. Land drop, missing land drops, or stumbling on lands, or mulliganing, and it's just very punishing. Unlike, unlike you know, just a control. Yeah, I mean, and there's something to that because the 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 matches you lose with the essentially, and and you're you're maybe not saying burn, you're saying whatever the most aggressive mm -hmm. deck to get your opponent to zero is. Yeah, right. Same with Fendi or something in modern. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those decks take advantage of kind of natural error of missing land drops or having a bad draw. Mm -hmm. And if you if you combine that over three decks, then your average should carry you to being two out of three more often than not. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, yes. That's that 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 what I'm saying. I mean, that makes sense. Honestly, mathematically, that does make sense. Yeah. Um, because even though the, uh, you know, the percentages are not, you know, they're not the, you know, I mean, you're, we're not talking the best deck. And I guess that's the, the question. Like, why wouldn't you have someone play team or energy and standard, have someone play humans, blue, red, I was going to say storm. Uh, human, human destroy storm. I think, I think humans is like the best deck now. Okay, sure. All right, fine. Or it's, the, it's definitely the deck of the month. Player Count of the month. Uh, collected company. Oh, no, humans. What? What? Okay, fine. Say I'll just say humans. Thank you. I'll say humans. Rainbow warriors. Uh, uh, tribal humans and modern and Grixis Delver in legacy. Mm -hmm. Why not go with that setup? Why not go with the the best decks? The uh, I think that, that that is actually also good too. Probably that's probably the best thing, right? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. You're the one that's saying aggro, aggro, aggro. You're trying to get the percentage points off of um, poor draws because, and, because, and missing land drops. Because those decks are not that like easy to play. Like uh, if you if you play humans or even Affinity in modern, like many Affinity is high one percent too. But Affinity is very hard. The ceiling is high in that deck. It's hard to play correctly. It's it hard is to... real. It's probably the most difficult aggro deck to play right, so in, even, like historically imagine right so, so even though it's the best deck if you know how to play it you're not gonna your wimps isn't that high it's even that's even more so in legacy like if you're a legacy player you traditionally play you know you know you're Shaheen Sirani, you play you know Esper's Dumbblade what I, I'm not gonna hand you Grixis, Grixis Delver just play your deck you're used to playing and you've, you've proved well with like so that, that that is the reason not to play the best deck is because because if you play the best deck, that's traditionally what other people will play, especially the younger the format, like standard. Yeah. And if you are not experienced, you are going to usually get destroyed by the experienced player. So. Yeah. Okay. So we have three setups. Play the the decks that take advantage of uh, early poor draws across the board. Play the best deck in each format, or play the deck that each each pilot is most comfortable with. Yeah. That's probably the least, but... Is the third option? Yes. Which is, of course, the option that we're going with. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know. I think it's a... I honestly think it's an interesting conversation to have. Is, no, I, I, I agree. Is uh, how do you... How do you find the best makeup for cross-format play? Not just... You know, not if you're all playing standard, unified, modern, etc. But but finding finding the best makeup. Um, anyway, we're, we're obviously really excited about going to Baltimore. I love playing team events with Ali and, uh, this is going to be, uh, 
I don't know when the next one is that we're going to be able to play, but hopefully we'll be able to do one uh, next year too. All right. Okay. Uh, well, we are, uh, I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to a discussion on unstable, which is the, <laughs> the thing that is being spoiled as we speak. So while we're not going to delve fully into an unstable discussion, because we're going to save that for next week, we are going to talk about silver bordered cards and their place in cubes and commander. So the latest, greatest, and craziest thing going on in the world of magic right now is unstable. How are you going to sound like that? It's got to be like this. Here, say unstable now. The latest, <laughs> the greatest, unstable. There you go. That's, that better? That, that's a lot better. Okay. I mean, I would probably be like a little more shocky. But like, I need mean like a, a taser. You're going to tase me? Yeah. Then, well, when you say unstable, it's like unstable. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I would finish the word. Oh, you're going to get to the S. But yeah, but but, but don't hear that. The, the, the taser, taser sound. And then it was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know that I got tased. Yeah. When I didn't talk anymore for the rest of the podcast, I figured out. <laughs> well, well, you'd for sure be unstable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes so sense. when you, after I got up and knocked you out. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, okay, so uh, obviously this isn't the first silver bordered, silver bordered set of magic cards. In fact, it's the third one, as most mm -hmm. of you know. Um, we're going to talk about unstable spoilers and previews and the full set, which is, should be out by the time we uh, record next week. So we're going to kind of push our card-specific discussion off for a week, but we'll, we'll promise we'll get to it. Uh, but the question this week is, should you include silver board cards into your cubes and your commander decks? And how do you feel about that? Ollie, how do you feel about that? How do I personally feel about that? Yeah, like just having 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 them play in your commander decks or your cube. I think it should totally be allowed. I mean, you made you made you made them, so why not let let people enjoy them in formats that aren't sanctioned? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I agree. Uh, we are, you know, I'm I have in in my cube. I have silver bordered cards, not a lot. But I have a handful. Oh, yeah. I remember playing with Who, What, When, Where, Why. Who, What, When, Where, Why is one of my favorites. Booster Tutor, another one of my favorites. That one's sweet. Uh, Blast from the Past is good. Um, and, in, and in Commander decks, you know, especially from this set, I, I think as long as the cards are fun, then it's fine. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, Yeah, so I guess my thing is, I believe that people should encourage their play groups to be able to use these cards for as long as they're they follow a singular rule the point of being able to allow these cards is to enhance themes or make the games more fun not make it more powerful yes if you're doing it just to combo up on turn four or five or six and kill at the table and whatever like no but if you're playing it just to have, have like fun and Blow one player up and blow another player up, or basically destroy players. <laughs> Destroying players, I think that's cool. Like okay, I think it's okay, Baron Von Count. Exactly. <laughs> I think I think that's fun. I think it's interesting. You see the you see the clock ticking down. Like I don't know. I think that's awesome. I think it sh should be allowed. Like why else are you making an unset? Like so. So I guess okay. But so this kind of straddles the line because Baron Von Count card from Unstable. It says destroy target player on. That's obviously really powerful, right? Yeah. That's, that's a powerful thing. That's essentially, dork nothingness. Yes, but you can have it as your commander. Yeah. And you can, you know, you could, in theory, build a deck that could go through that really quickly. Could you? Yeah, if you, if you used non-silver border cards, without a doubt you could. Can you take down the clock? Can Fast you, enough? Can you proliferate the clock? No, you cannot. Okay. You cannot. You can't proliferate it. That would actually not even help you. That would hurt you. Uh, yeah. Um, but you can't either way. But I guess that's kind of the point is, are you using this for good or evil? 
if you're just having what's, this as a it's, fun well, card, what's a, it's a, definitely a villain. It is legally a villain. That's true. <laughs> um, but no, but seriously, like, are you playing with these cards so you can like, you know, make the doom counter go to zero and kill three three other players as fast as you possibly can to win the game, or are you just doing it to have fun moments in your deck? Yeah, that that, that is important. Like again, because with with are you trying to kill everybody by turn five through ten? Yeah. Or are you trying to like kill a person by turn ten, maybe kill another by turn fifteen or sixteen? Like that's fine. That's fine. And that's fine. That's but if fine. you're but if you're like you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Oh, that was fun. No, that's not fun, man. So I guess a card I want to point out is a card that I used to have in my cube, but I don't have in my cube anymore. It's a silver border card. Now, it's not from Unglued, Unhinged, or Unstable. It's actually from, it's a holiday gift card, which are also silver bordered. But the card Gifts Given. It's similar to Gifts Ungiven, except you take four cards out of your opponent's deck, and they choose which two go in your hand and which two go in their graveyard. Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy card. It is a really outrageously powerful card. It was one of the best blue cards in my cube. I took it out, because ultimately... Yes, it's a printed magic card, but I felt like it was... <laughs> take their four best answers or threats and... You take their four best cards them. and you get two of them. Yeah, that's absurd. You don't even have to draft them. You still have all of your best cards. Yeah. Yeah, it was like... A, uh, it, it, it created some unfun game states. So, it, I took it out. Yeah, it's almost as bad as Jace Emery Dept. Is that what he is? Yeah, but for different reasons. Yeah. That just ended the game. It was a singular... Jace Memory Adept is a singular... It, it does one thing, but yeah. it does it to an extreme, and it doesn't really allow for a lot of room for interpretation on what you're supposed to be doing with that card. Yeah. But for for cards like Gifts gifts Given, and, and inevitably there are going to be some cards in Unstable, as we continue to see this set previewed, that are going to fall into that camp of, is this a card that I want to put in my cube or put in my commander deck that's going to help me kill everybody faster in the game quicker or just do more broken things rather than do stuff that's fun. So that's where I want to draw the line is figuring out what's fun and what's not. And and that's when I say me, I literally mean for me and the people that I'm playing with. Like I'm, frequently I play on commander versus obviously that's kind of my play group, mm -hmm. but I even mean for my cube too. Like when I'm cubing with my friends, I had to decide as a cube owner, what is the line? Because some of these cards, you know, in a silver bordered set, they're not, if you're playing with all unstable, unhinged, unglued cards, their power levels are all over the place. But when you introduce more strict rules in the black bordered sets, the regular magic sets, some of these cards get really powerful, maybe to a degree that you might not be comfortable with. And you have to decide as a cube owner or a commander player, where do I draw that line of this is fun and it's not just increasing the power level of my cube or my deck? Yeah, I, honestly, I even think it's fine to, like, if you if your playgroup is highly competitive and, like, cutthroat and, you, you know, the, if they're okay, I think, I think it's even, if your playgroup's okay with it and, they, and you guys and they say, hey, well, I have a, you know, Sharam, the Hegemon, Super Combo deck that might say the whole table. Sure. You can go, if you want, you could, we, we'll let you play this, you know, but, Von yeah, Von Doom, whatever. As yeah. long, I think as, as a play group, it's all on the same page. And it, 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 then it, it, should be, it should be fine. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Ali. It, it, it honestly, it does depend. If the people you're playing with, if everyone has access to the same stuff, and yes. that's okay. And yeah. everyone in there in legitimately agrees, like not someone's like, uh, I don't really like it, but everyone else is going to go with it, so I guess it's fine. Yeah. Like, if everyone's on the same page, it's like, yes, we want to have all of these cards legal. Most of them are just silly cards. Some of them are going to be really powerful based on just whatever they are. Yeah. If everyone's fine with that... Oh, that's all that matters. As long as, as long as you're having fun, yeah. I think, because people drive, get fun from different different ways. Like, some like long games, some like, you know, having casting crazy spells like Hive Mind, some like Group Hug. So, it and someone's being super cutthroat, as long as the whole group is okay with it and they're enjoying themselves, then I think you're good to go. So now there's another part to this coin because 
I was talking about earlier how at GP Atlanta, I, I got to play commander with, you know, a handful of different people that watch the show. And because these are silver border cards that we're talking about, I cannot in good conscience feel comfortable enough to put a silver border card in my deck. Yeah. Go to a tournament. I'm not even talking, to, I don't even mean tournament necessarily. Go to a card store and play against a random a game a game with someone I've never played before. Yeah. Cuz what's their reaction going to be if I play the silver border card? Are they going to be like, "Well, you can't really you can't play that." Yeah, that's true. Again, it's true. That, that's very true. Like I I wouldn't do it either. Um I might ask them maybe have a backup in case like uh switch it out for this card. The only problem though, if if that's if that's your commander, you can probably it's probably it's probably a problem. So, and then if it's just what if it's just one card? What if it's two, three, four? Yeah, I hope. I mean, I wish Wizards. Would. So, so this brings us to our question of the week. It does not bring us to our question of the week. You want to keep going? All right, I'll I'll let you keep making your point. Go ahead. Oh no, I. I what What is the question of the week? <laughs> so the, the question of the week. I sh- I guess I shotgunned it a little bit. I'll give me the stink eye. <laughs> is should. Knowing that this is the case, that these cards are not legal in both tournament settings and in most parts in overarching casual settings, like Commander, yeah, is mainly what we're talking about. Should they continue to print unsets with that in mind? I'm going to go with they should not print unsets if they're not going to let them be allowed to play anywhere else besides the draft draft and sealed, whatever it is. So in isolation? Yes. I think they should not print that. I think there's no reason to print them if, if that's the only reason you, you can have them. So just to clarify. Yes. Because, for like, you know, as, as the example I was giving, because you can't walk into a card store, sit down, and have these cards in your deck. Mm-hmm. And feel like it's acceptable to be playing Commander or even just a random Constructed if you're just playing for fun. If you can't do that, they should not make them going just, forward. Correct. That is my argument. I say no. Okay. I think that, that ultimately they should. And I'm previously, because we talked about this a, so a couple months ago, I was not a fan of Unsets, mainly because I felt like they were really gimmicky. But that being said, I'm still a fan of silver border cards because they let you do things outside of the norm. If if I was in a world where I didn't have like who, what, when, where, why, and booster tutor, and all of these fun cards that I've had in my cube over the years, and of course now I'm thinking about these cards for commander versus, I want to be able to do that. So yeah, I want them to be able to print silver border cards even though they're not going to go right in my decks. As far as decks I'm going to be playing out in public. Right. I I, I think I think it's a no. I think it's a no because you can have some people go go to this this release. They might have to they might have fun. Like I want to go to the release. I want to play it. But all these cards, I'm going to open them and look at them. Okay, is, is this a land? Alright, put it in this pile. Is this a token? All right, put it in St. Paul's land. Everything else can essentially just go in the trash can. Like, you're printing all these cards that aren't legal anywhere else, and you the way you, you, the way you make it worth it is buy these lands. But you can technically print, print these lands in any other set. You can make these tokens in any other set. So if you are not going to let me play with these cards that are open in, my, in casual formats or anywhere else, why are you, are you giving to me? It's, it's, it's like the... It's like the it's like an evil Santa Claus. It's like, look what you can have. Nah, you can't have that. It's like it's like it's like evil teasing Santa Claus. I don't want that. See, I and I feel like I still want to be able to have the experience. You don't have the experience of being teased by Santa Claus? Well, first of all, some people are into that. <laughs> Two, yeah, I, I want to be able to. I want to be able to experience these cards. Like. Why? But you're not gonna be able to experience them except in seal and draft. That's not true, though. Like I can put, I can decide to put them in my cube, and I have the ability to. 
identify ways if I'm playing commander with my friends in my play group or I'm playing with my cube, I can put these cards in. Not I'm not going to shove all of them in, but if I want to have 10 cards from unstable, make my cube, then I can do that. If I de deem them, this is fine, even though it's a silver border card. It doesn't matter. The border colors do not matter as far as I'm concerned in my play group and in my cube. So if I didn't, if, if these sets weren't printed, I wouldn't have access to those cards. And even though, ma ma no, I'm not using all of them. I'm only using a small percentage of them. But why would we not print fun stuff if it's outside the norm just because we're in a situation where maybe some people are going to get upset they can't play with these cards all over the place. And but, uh, and all I agree with you. I wish I wish that they I wish that they could. Right. I will say that I wish that they could, but I don't want to take them away because you can't. I I, I don't I don't like being like can you imagine like what if they print like some sweet well they they have printed some sweet legend creatures. Let's say I want I make this um was it was it called Dr. Von Doom? What is he called? Baron Von Count. Baron Von Count. Yes. The, the clock guy. Let's say I build this clock deck. All right. Yeah. And I have this, like, maybe I, maybe I even do the next smile. Like, I, I make this sweet, special takedown counter that's just for my deck. Mm -hmm. And I build all around it. Yep. The deck is awesome. My, my play group loves it. I love it. This is my deck. And then I take it to, like, I take it to an event. And I want, I want to play in a commander pod with other people. I want to show this off. Like, I, I've put hours. I put out art. I put my, like, emotions and just blood, blood this, sweat, and tears. Yeah, this this shows off my work. Like this is this is a piece of art for me, and I want to show it off to other people. And as soon as it, as soon as I sit down with this and, and reveal my commander, the first thought they're gonna be like is, uh, "You can't play that. You know that, right?" And then I'm just gonna be like, "I'm just gonna be upset." So you're saying you don't even want to have that opportunity? Like you're so averse to that happening that you just don't want these to exist? Yeah, if I if 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 I can do anything with them, don't give them to me. I don't want them. I mean, I do see, I do see what you're saying about the lands, and I I do think that it's pretty clear that that's like one of the major reasons that, yeah. that these are in here. And yeah. I get it to sell booster packs. First of all, well, that's Wizards' ultimate goal. But I mean, like, even even if you're going to ignore ninety percent of these cards, isn't it worth it? For the ten percent that are really awesome to exist, just put those ten percent. Put those ten percent in a legal set. How? But you, how can you put booster tutor in a legal set? Put it in the. Put it in the, the standalone set conspiracy. How can you? How could you make? Like, something like, uh, like well, Baron von Count. Put him in conspiracy. Three. <laughs> the barons. <laughs> the barons are back. Seriously, conspiracy is literally a standalone set where cards are legal in whatever format and in the gray for cube, and they're they're legal. You can play them in your commander deck if you want. But what if they don't want to have that card legal in Legacy? Baron von Kant. They don't, uh, don't have Legacy. Yeah, no, I'm losing. <laughs> you're, you're really yeah. I'm, I yeah. I just I don't wanna be, I don't want to be giving million dollars. But like, hey, look, here's million dollars. But you, by the way, you can't spend the, you can't spend this. Just don't give me the million dollars. But what about okay, fine. I've I've been saving this one up. Uh oh. You you've seen the contraptions, right? Uh some of them. You've uh, just one at least. Yeah. You know you know what they are. Sure. Kind of. So <laughs> So you're saying just even though like this is something that could create a lot of fun for a lot of people, because you could just have these decks that are around contraptions and you could have like you don't even have you can mix silver border cards or black border cards and still have like your contraptions decks and do all those things and just you just don't want to have that because i can't play with them because you can't go into a public place and play with yes them? yes come on oh, man and they can do this we've seen them do steam flogger boss in future sight we've seen them do conspiracy stuff that's only it's like freaking there's some cards that you like Pick two cards at once in, in, in cube. Yeah. Or add another pack. But they can do this and so, so just don't name it un don't name it un whatever unstable or just name make it a cool different set make it, make it future site two. 
Whatever. If, so if Future Sight and Conspiracy had a baby. Yeah, exactly. It could be this set. Yeah, that's that yes. They can definitely do it. But don't don't tease me and say I can't I can't touch like, no, I don't want that, okay? I'm man, I'm man there right now. That that can come later. I don't <laughs> I don't. I don't like cards to be teased. Okay. You don't want to be teased. Not by cards. I'll uh, <laughs> look. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Okay. I'm because like like I honestly I don't laugh. I don't laugh at a lot of these cards. I'm just like okay. Well, I'm sure someone enjoys that. But like, there's this one card that I saw, slaying mantis. <laughs> Did you did you see this? No, it just sounds funny. It is funny because it's it's a praying mantis that's dressed up in a wrestler costume with like a lucha libre mask, yeah. jumping off the top rope on like three goblins. That's hilarious. It is hilarious, and you can't have that. You're not putting that in conspiracy. Why You're can't not putting you? That in future sight. Who says you can't? Because it's ridiculous. It's hilarious. It is hilarious. Do it. It doesn't have a place in a real magic set. Why can't doesn't. Why can't magic be funny? Because it's not. It <laughs> It's not funny like that, because that's ridiculous. Oh my God. All right, my final statement. Final statement. If I can't, if you're not, if don't give me toys or show me toys that I can't touch. Don't don't show me this sweet iPhone that you, I can't play with. Don't give me money that I can't spend. I don't want that. Do not make do not make sets where I can't play the cards and the formats. No, do not make those sets. I I am going on record. I say yes. I want to have the experience. I want to be able to play with these handful of cards with my playgroup and my cube when I want to. I'm saying yes. Question of the week: Should they continue to make unsets if they're not legal in casual formats? You can let us know at Think Twice MTG on Twitter at. Jake Purnell one on Twitter at Ali Aldrazi on Twitter. Let us know what you guys think this week. Uh, and I think that's going to wrap us up for our, our silver board discussion part one. So we are now going to be jumping into something I'm super excited about Thor Ragnarok. Now, again, just like last week when we talked about stranger things, this isn't going to be spoilers. So once we jump out at the break right here, when we come back, it's going to be spoilers. Get ready for Thor. So on a scale of 9 to 10, how much did you love this movie? How much do I love it? Yeah, on a scale of 9 to 10. Scale of 9 to 10. Yeah, I, just, I took away all of the other un, unrealistic options. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, and on that scale, it's going to be a 9. A 9? That's the lowest thing on the scale you could have chosen. <laughs> that is. Because it is, I don't think it deserves a 9. You know, okay. So in all seriousness... You see, you did not you didn't love this movie. I like this movie. I don't love it. You like you're poo pooing it. You're poo pooing it right out the gate. I'm one. I'm one of poo face. I'm not poo pooing it. Yeah. I liked it, but I don't love it. I know the sound of Ollie poo pooing something, and that is exactly what's happening. Oh, I, I know the sound of you poo pooing too. And it doesn't smell good. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I thought this movie was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Eh. This. That's poo pooing. You just did it. You just did. It. You can't say you like something. It's just because eh. it wasn't great. I thought. It go was, ahead. You know I, what? I, I go thought, ahead. I thought it was great. I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let you go. So, um, I I'm just gonna go through the things that I enjoyed. Uh the director, uh, uh, Takiro Watiti, which is uh, this is his first like big budget movie that he directed um i recently a few months ago saw another one of his movies called what we do in the shadows i was explaining it to ali before the podcast it's freaking hilarious it's about uh four vampires that live in a flat together and it's like a mockumentary comedy it's hilarious anyway the humor that he brought in the script in the writing for the characters and all of the scenes also, uh, in one of the characters specifically, this is something that I feel like is 
sorely missing in the majority of these superhero movies. Now, we've seen it in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. Those are both very funny movies. But this is funny in like a it's a different way. Like those two, those movies are funny because of Chris Pratt and David Bautista and, and like the, the funny interactions they have between like a mismatched group of characters. This is funny from a cinematography standpoint, as far as how it's shot, the characters were really written really well. This was my, my favorite part of the movie. And it actually makes me sad is I'm concerned that they're not going to write Thor the character Thor, not the movie, the character Thor, like they did in this movie going forward. He was super snarky, but he was very confident and a little silly and dumb, but not stupid, if that makes sense. That makes, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, I think all of the action sequences were awesome. The, the soundtrack to the movie was fantastic. And... I think all the characters, all the major characters were pretty interesting, as I see you yawning as I'm saying that. I didn't want to yawn in person. Your like, retort, Polly, after you've yawned. I'm going to let you finish, but no. Go ahead, Kanye. <laughs> yeah. No, the movie was, there were, I was never, it was funny. I'll give it that. It had some funny moments, but I was, I never felt like there was something, there was something important that had to be done. We had like, there was, I was never on the edge of my seat. I was never like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? Oh, is he going to win? Is he going to lose? I just, it wasn't, the opening fight scene was, it was kind of awkwardly comedic. It started happening and like, Thor was just spinning around. Hold on, hold on. Like, that was funny the first time. Second time, third time, fourth time, I was like, okay. All right, this is, what is this? Am I watching a comedy here? Like, like this, this, I, I don't like this. And then, and then after that, we see. You know, I like. I like Loki. Thor's great. Whatever. Got Thor always always gets a spotlight. Loki, younger brother, and he is the god of mischief. The god of mischief gets out somewhere twice here by Thor. Like, no, get out of here. And then on top of that, you have this other character who's a who's a combination of Ursula. And Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers, Power Rangers, with this ridiculous mask. That's dude. That mask was awesome. What was? No, it was awesome. It, it was, was ridiculous. super awesome. She put, and she like she like she put it on by pushing her hair back. No, like magic. No, there was no hair. Okay, she, she had hair. She's put on like, oh look at me! I'm Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers, and I'm gonna be evil with these spikes in my hair. No, get out of here. What? You're not cool. That was first Hella and Kate Blanchett, who played her, was fantastic. She was not scary. She was not threatening. She was. How was she? Look, she's not, she's not scary in like a horror movie way. She wasn't. Her power, she literally could shoot weapons out of her hands. I didn't care. What? She murdered like a ton of people. Sure, but like her power was cool. But you know, you know whose power was cooler? Thor. We got we got all lightning god esque. Sure. Okay. So you're complaining that she no. wasn't cool because Thor was cooler. You know who else was cooler? No. The Hulk. No. Yes, he's fighting a freaking giant. You know who's cool? The giant dog. The giant no, dog was the cool. The giant dog was cool. I I liked the giant dog. Yeah, she was just she was an evil villain, but she had like no spotlight besides these ridiculous piece of junk on her head that remind me of. Some Halloween costume that was super old. Like, get out of here. Man, you are... Get out of here. poo pooing this hard. Because because everyone's like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And no, it's not. I was never thrilled. It was funny. It was a comedy. And it was just like medium. I, would, medium. I do think that the opening scene set the tone. It was I, way I, too much. You think... You, you, like, you thought it was like too silly? Way too silly. Like, the one... I can get the one spinning thing like, hold on, hold on. Let me get back to you. That's funny. But it happened like I think like three or four times. That's the part like, of the joke. Please stop. That's not funny. <laughs> See, I th I thought I thought it was. Funny. I I laughed at the majority of the jokes. One of them, I, the part when, and I know you're gonna hate this because it was part one of the parts when Loki was outsmarted when he was like sitting in a chair, uh, before they decided to leave that the junk planet. 
and they were all talking about Loki and how he's always trying to trick everyone. And Thor was talking about one time when they were little, <laughs> Loki had turned into a snake. <laughs> you know you laughed at this part. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm not saying it wasn't funny, like, but it was Thor funny. Was, Thor was like, and then Loki turned into a snake, and he knew I would pick up the snake because I admired it. And then he turned back into Loki, boo, and they stabbed me. <laughs> and Loki other smirks. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's funny. I give it. It's funny. Like it has. It had definitely funny moments, but I was never waiting for something. Like I was again. I was never edge my edge my seat. It felt very calm. It's not, and, and that's the thing. Okay, so it's like an action comedy, but it's not the edge of. It's not an edge of your seat movie. I do see what you're saying. It felt because of the humor. It was too much humor. It felt, because of the humor, it felt like there wasn't a lot on the line. Correct. Yeah. I do, I do. Like, Thor's dad died. Odin died. I'm just like, okay, cool. Peace, dude. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's it. I, I just, I just didn't, I didn't feel for any characters. No character died. I was like, gosh, darn it. I don't want him to die. Like, there was no, like, I didn't, I, I didn't empathize with anybody, really. It was just all ha 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 punch 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 ha ha which is fine but throw some like emotion in there sometime man i need that i think it was super entertaining it, i was thoroughly entertained from literally the first scene until the last scene so i i laughed but is that not important it is important but are you it's, upset it's also, because you were going in not thinking that it was going to be i think i i know i went in thinking it was gonna be great from when I read reviews, saw on Twitter, saw on face, Facebook. Yeah. It's like, this is going to be great. Go in, and I'm just like, is this a, this a, this a, this a, a comedy? Well, yeah, it was. It was a comedy. It was like all comedy. So, but like, are you, are, you, are you upset because you wanted it to be action and it was comedy? Is that it? No, I don't mind I comedy. I want to find the crux of this. I don't mind comedy, but there was no, there's no, I'm telling you, there was no pulling at your heart. There's no emotion. You weren't on the edge of your seat. It was very, very mellow tone. It's like watching, I was watching a Seinfeld or whatever oh, comedy. Now, like you're, now you're being mean. Well, it's true. People are uplifting, uplifting this movie too much. It wasn't the best movie of all time. It was like... No, it, was, it wasn't. No, it was, like, it, was like a, it was like a solid six and a half, maybe. Maybe six. So, okay, so here's, here's what I've really enjoyed about the MCU movies. They're all superhero movies, but they're different kinds of superhero movies. Like, they're different genres. They're not all dramas. They're not all pure action movies. Some are comedies. Like, you had... Um, I'm only finished. But yeah, you yeah had, build it up. You know, the, you, know the best, you know the best part of that movie was? The end. No, no, come on, man. I don't know. You tell me. You're setting me up for some jokes. That I'm no, gonna it's into. not a joke. What was the best part of the Doctor movie? Strange was the best part of that movie. Because it kind of shows that he reached uh, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Supreme. Who just like opened. First of all, it's Sorcerer Supreme. Whatever it is. Don't, don't be insulting. Sorry. Sorcerer Supreme. I, I apologize. Because Doctor Strange is B.A. He is bad A. You can, you can just. You can he's say badass. That. Right. He's he's all powerful. He's great. He's, he's, see, he's, he's our mix. He's funny, but powerful and serious we need to be. Like, the, he is the perfect mix of comedy, action, and like, oh my God. Like, you know what I think it is? What? I don't think you don't like Thor. No, it's not that. But do you like Thor? Thor's fine. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think you like him. I well, don't think you like Thor. Well, I was kind of happy when his hammer broke. I don't like that. Yeah, there you go. You don't like Thor. That's not true. At all. I, it's not like Thor. It's just like I don't like the god of mischief being outsmarted by Thor. So you, so you like Loki, and you were upset because Loki was out mischief twice. He's literally called the god of mischief. What did he do? He didn't do anything. He had a dagger. He made like little. He always. If he didn't do anything, <laughs> where was his mischief? He weaseled his way into uh, being Jeff Goldblum's best buddy. I, I guess. I think Jeff Goldblum just was everyone's best buddy. He was either like, he was either having, having sex, he was having a drink, he was watching fights. He just, I'll, he I'll have a, an aside about Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum in the last 
20 years hasn't played any characters but Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he just gets cast as <laughs> Jeff Goldblum in different movies, and he's going to keep getting those roles because he's the best person at playing Jeff Goldblum. Oh, that's hilarious. He was he was he was he was a good whatever the character was. The the Grandmaster. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Yeah, he was yeah. just yeah, he was great. He's character. and he is because he's great. He he's he's the same thing in everything, but it's fine because he's fantastic at it. Okay, so by the way, you want to explain the ending, the ending to me with this movie? Which ending? The secret ending with the... Which, there's two. The second one. Both of them, I don't care. <laughs> explain the ending to me. Well, which which one? What well, was... the, the first one, like, it's uh, Grandmaster Supreme steps out of his little spaceship, and... Oh, yeah, yeah. And, they were, and he was just like, great, you guys did a great job. You can't have a revolution without some revolutionaries. <laughs> yeah. And you can't have a revolution without someone to overthrow. So, hands off to everyone. Yeah. That one? Is that... Yeah. So, was he overthrown? There, he's getting ready to. Uh-oh. Getting ready to be overthrown. Uh-oh. And he was trying to just, like, laugh it off and... And make everyone just kind of calm down. He's trying to just, like, weasel his way out of it. What was it happening? Probably not. Also, he was super old. He was super old, wasn't he? Apparently. Yeah, but they don't age in that plane. He doesn't. He doesn't age necessarily. We don't know what. He's not human. He's something else. Okay. And then the second ending was like a giant Death Star spaceship flying over their spaceship. That's probably uh, Death Star. No, that's uh, not the Death Star. Death Star One is much much bigger than that. That's the size of a planet. Uh, that was probably Thanos's ship. If I had to guess, then, okay. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to go into an Infinity War. Oh, we saw the Infinity Gauntlet, which was fake one, by the way. The fake, the fake. Yes, the, the, fake is the, is the fake one. Yeah. Which was and see, <clears throat> funny. Hello was like knocked there. She was like fake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So I think that's what, so. I think oh, so what was that flame? That wasn't even explained. It was explained. It just no. It was just this flame brings people back to life. That's all it was. It's the eternal flame. Yeah, it burns that, eternally. I know it's called it's exactly that's where I know eternal flame burns eternally. But maybe that's what its power does. I feel it. It burns eternally. It's like the Olympic flame. Okay, whatever. <laughs> this this movie was just like the coolest part. Like I, I saw eternal flame. No one explained it. She just used it, brought things back to life. Thor used it, brought this giant guy back to life. And it's just like, all right. See, all, the the only person I needed to be funny. The whole movie was my my, 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 favorite, my favorite character. Loki. No. Who is your favorite character? Your favorite character was is it Korg? Korg? Yeah, Korg. My far favorite character. Who's hilarious? Who do you know who voiced him? No. <laughs> Takeda Watiti, the director. Oh my him. god, he was fantastic. Loved him. A plus plus. He God, every scene he was just great. Like there were things blown up, like stuff flying everywhere. He's just like, "Hey, what up, guys? How you doing?" And at the end, one time he's carrying carrying his buddy. Like they just like fought like God knows why. They're flying off like someone just died with guns in their guns, and the Hulk is fighting the dog. Like it's going crazy. He's like he's holding this little this little alien thing. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I stepped on him. I thought I killed him. I felt so bad. I just carrying the whole time." Yeah, he, he's he's dead, and then he starts moving around. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's a dead guy. He's like, but, but he does it better, in a better voice. I'm doing. It's 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 like, it's great. It was great. Fair character, and that's all the comedy I needed in the whole movie. So you just wanted like the comic, the comedic relief character. Yeah, I I, I don't want the comedic relief do movie. You, do you? I Thor, think, I think comedic were, relief movie. I, I see. I liked that though. I like Thor was my favorite character because I thought he was written perfectly. Like he was really snarky and he was taking things really lightly because he is so powerful. And over the last several years, since he came like, as far as like in the movie wise, since he came to earth and he realized that everything like, like after hanging out with Tony Stark, not everything was so serious. So he started to not kind of just loosen up and realize, well, I don't need to take, everything so serious i'm really powerful so i don't need to not everything is like the most serious thing in the entire world all right so question yes who's stronger thor or hulk physically 
or more powerful? Who's more powerful? Both. Uh, Thor. Is it, is it the same thing? Stronger, like who can lift more weights? No, like, if, they, if they were fighting to the death, who would win? Thor. No way. Hulk would win. Nah, Thor would win because he'd get because when he gets like he's kind of a little hulkish too. When he gets really upset, then his lightning and thunder powers are going to start going crazy. That's how does Hulk? Yeah, yeah, but he literally could just like fry him. No, he can't. He can't fry the Hulk. Hulk smash. Then, then you can't smash lightning though. Hulk smash. He you can't. Anything. You can't. Not Have you heard him? He will smash that lightning. Yeah, I heard him a lot. He talked quite a bit in this movie, which is crazy, by the way. Why? That was cool. Like that was. No, it makes well. He's been in. He's been in Hulk form for two years. Yeah. So he learned how to say some things. Some words. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that was that was that was unique. That was that was a, that was an aspect of movie that I didn't I didn't enjoy. Get to see getting get to see the Hulk and not in like a. Only a crazy, angry state, but actually going to see like him sitting down and yeah, doing whole you get, things. You get to see him be the a Hulk, character, yeah, but as like a human kind of right, yeah, because he still has some human qualities in him, obviously. Yeah, um, I really like Bruce Banner as a character, also. I thought he was funny, he was funny, I mean, he was funny when he was dressed up in Tony Stark's clothes and he was always like grabbing his crotch. He's like, he's just, just too tight. <laughs> too <You're> tight. Too <laughs> tight. <laughs> <laughs> see you, you i think i said here, here's what i think happened you were expecting an action movie and you walked into a comedy and you felt like you got tricked and you didn't like it it was just i i told you i didn't like it i'm not saying it again i'm not listening to all my other reasons i think again. that's i think that's why you didn't like it though no question of the week number two <laughs> is did ollie get tricked into thinking this was not a no. comedy and it was and he didn't like it the thing is, like, the way I was never. I'm not, I'm not doing it again. I've, listened, I've said this so much. <laughs> you know what? I'll do it again. Uh huh. Okay. Loki got out trick. Got him out trick twice. I don't like that. Though there's there's no important. N- n- nothing's even important. Um, I was never at the edge of my seat. Asgard got blowed Shh. up. I was not expecting. Any, I was not expecting anything. And then, Helvina or Blue Cheese, whatever her name is. Hella. It's very simple. Helvina Blue Cheese. <laughs> The, the the daughter of baby of Ursula and Rita Repulsa from She's Power Rangers. Odin, Odin's, Odin's daughter. Rita Repulsa and Ursula, the little mermaid. Her outfit was just ridiculous. Like, get out of here with that nonsense. Like, please stop. And she, I, I couldn't take her seriously with that outfit. And her powers were bo- awesome. boring. Awesome. No. No. I, I, no. <laughs> and then, like, I, I, even her story wasn't, like, my story was lame. I will conquer everything. Why? That's, that's Odin's story. What's your drive? Like why? She she never drive. She just wanted to do it. Like oh my I didn't I didn't connect on I didn't connect on any character. No no character felt important. If anyone died, I'd have been like, eh. Okay. Except except for except for uh Krog. I miss if he died. That's about it. <laughs> Cause he'd be he'd have died and be like like it'd have been like a dr- dramatic scene, like, it's okay, guys. I'm dying. <laughs> But don't forget me. Tell my mama I love her. Then he dies. Korg, Korg. Korg was good. Yeah, Korg was good. Korg, Korg was good. I'll give you that. Korg was good. All right. I don't, I don't have any... Look, I'm just going to leave it with this. All right. You're poo-pooing it. Whatever. Call whatever you want. Poo-pooing. That's what I'm... Just call it what you want. But don't say what it is. I'm making up a song. You're poo-pooing it. And we're calling it Poop. Fizz. Poo-pooing it. Fizz. You're poo-pooing the song. And you poo poo in the movie. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna poo poo your face. All right. Actually, you might like that. I'm gonna do that. Actually. Yeah. Look, we're we're gonna. I'm just gonna keep plowing through. I'm not even gonna pay attention wow, to that comment. Wow. Plowing. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You guys, let us know. Let us. I I am curious to know what everyone except for Ali thinks of Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> All right. All right. I enjoyed the movie thoroughly. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I hope they continue to write Thor like they did in this movie. I think it was the best version of Thor, and I think this is easily the best Thor movie. This is like in my top, definitely in my top five Marvel MCU movies. I do hope they keep Thor as he is, but just don't make the movies like as, as this, this comedic. Okay, I'm sorry. Ollie hates to laugh. Oh my god, I want to kill you. All right, we're going to move <laughs> on. 
Uh, that's the uh, that's the that's the show for this week, guys. So we're gonna be out and be back in just a minute. So, Ollie, you and I are both going to Baltimore next week. The best this week, city. Right now. When you're listening, this there's a good chance we'll be in Baltimore. Be in Baltimore or driving to Baltimore. If you're a Patreon supporter, you'll definitely be, oh, who knows? In route. You'll hear us we while could we're be, in route. We could be in, asleep. We, we could, could be in your dreams. I mean, yep. You, you're now entering the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Okay, so in addition to Baltimore, um, next week we are going to be talking about uh, unstable spoilers, and of course uh, our our win in Baltimore when we win the tournament. After yeah, after we win, yeah, after we win. So we'll talk about that. And yeah. of course, Thanksgiving is next week. So uh, if we don't talk to you, or if you guys don't listen to our voices before Thanksgiving. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a nice little day off. Stuff your face with food. Take at least two naps. Watch some football. Yeah. yeah don't watch football. Go go do some whatever else some whatever else you want to do. Play playing football? Hang out with family. You know, hang Watching out, football. Hang out hang out with that cousin you never you never hang out hang out with. No, actually don't do that. Ignore everybody, take naps. Yeah. I would say eat. Watch, yeah, eat. Then watch football, take a nap. Just, just now, feel free to. That's the, really the most important thing: is food and sleep. Yeah, you know what? I, In a concurrent cycle, wake <laughs> up from a nap, get some more food, eat some more food, take a nap. Yeah, eat whatever you want. If you are meat eater, vegetarian, whatever you, whatever you do, enjoy it. But the most important part is eat that pie, man. Put some ice cream on it. Heat the pie up. Put some ice cream. On, put some vanilla ice cream on it. It's gonna be delicious. Like I'm getting hungry thinking about it. You're always hungry though. Maybe, Ollie. Where where can people find you next next Thursday on uh, Thanksgiving or on the internet, whichever one you pick? Where can they find me on on, on Thanksgiving or on the internet? I'll no. let you choose. Uh, Thanksgiving, you can find me. No, you can find me on the internet at Ollie Aldrazi on Twitter. You can find my articles every Friday at gatheredmatters dot com, and you can find my Twitch at twitch tv dot slash Ollie Aldrazi. But that was something something very important right now. I'm just streaming hacks. If you learn hacks, make sure you can tune to that. All right, Parnell. You can find me on Twitter at jparnell1, and of course on Commander Versus on Star City and StarCityGames.com. We are slowly getting well, not slowly, but we're inching on to the end of season nine as we do the end of the year. Um, you definitely want to be paying attention if you're listening to this in real time. Uh, you want to watch next week's episode. It's our 100th episode. There's things that are happening at the end that you want to be paying attention to and like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff that I say at the end of that show. You want to do that for sure next week. However, you can find this show, Think Twice. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on YouTube. The thing we would love for you to do is comment on the show. If you have any comments, anything about Thor, anything about team events, anything about Silver Border cards, we'd love for you to leave us a nice little review on iTunes. And most importantly, we really would like for you to share this with your friends. That is the best way for us to continue to be able to do the show is for our audience to continue to grow. And we really need your help to do that. All of the listeners that we have right now if you can just tell one friend, that's my, that can be my my Thanksgiving gift for me. Ollie will have a different one, probably something ice cream related. <laughs> no ice cream, no pie. Oh, no pie. Oh, pie. No cake. Just pie. Pie. All the pie. Uh, but for me, if you can tell one other person, get one other person to listen to this podcast. Tell the pie. Or nope. Person, a person with ears. Why can't with why ears? Can, are you? you pies don't have ears, Ali. I'm not going to have this debate. Someone with ears. <laughs> right. If they can listen to this podcast, that's the best thing. If you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at twitter.com/slash thinktwicemtg. And of course, 
you can email us thinktwicemtg at gmail.com. In addition to sharing the show, which is really important for us, we'd love for you to be able to support the show in any way you can at patreon.com slash thinktwicemtg. Uh, we have a couple of support tiers up now. Um, we want to have a special shout out this week to our newest Disciple of Bolus Patreon supporter, David P. David, thank you so much for your support. It literally means the world to us for you and all of our other Patreon supporters. You guys are completely awesome. David P, Patreon, Patreon supporters, you're better than Thor Ragnarok. I think uh, we're not going to do it that at least. Well, I think I have to. There you go. I See, have there to. you go. Got him. And you, got David, David P, you have been, you and all of our other Patreon supporters have enriched my life more than Thor. I will agree with that. There you go. And also, David P, have some. Oh my gosh, his name is David. He's David Pie. <laughs> David Pie, have think, some pie. I don't think it's David P. It's just David P. I don't know that it's pie. I, I, it's pie. I think it's pie. David Pie, thank you for thank you for the five pies. You know what? I'm gonna buy five pies with that five dollars. Thank you very much. We well, love you and all the other Patreon supporters. Yes. And if you are a Patreon supporter, and I know a lot of you are, um, every week I'm doing a uh, Patreon-only commander deck list. The last week, uh, a solo Vile Smasher deck was the winner. So you can find that uh, right now on our Patreon, as well as the poll for next week to see what deck I'll be doing for next week's uh, Patreon-only commander deck. Thank God Vile Smasher is smashing pies. It might be. Nah. Check that Patreon, see what it's smashing. Let's find out. She's smashing all kinds of stuff. Pies. Not vases, pies, man. Hearts. Well, if it's a pie, please be please be a pie in my face with whipped cream. Yeah, but she's smashing it. I'll, I'll, hey, some of some, some like that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we're going to continue to have more uh, Patreon content up. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to make sure that I have a commander deck list every single week. Again, this one's Vile Smasher. Uh, you guys will have to look and you can vote on the deck list that you guys want to see in the next week on that page as well. We also want to give a special thanks to our director and producer, John Che, and our graphic designer, Amber West. We could not do the show without them. Um, and they are the the other part to our, our team. You don't hear them but they are in the background doing their little dance. Clickety click, 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 click. Clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety yep. clack. Yeah, they're doing that. Yep. All right. No, you're not saying it. We're not saying I love you. We're ending, we're ending this one on a different note. All right. You are now leaving the Twilight Zone. Do 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 do